What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. This is Eric, and today we're going to talk a little bit St. Louis Cardinals as we're getting ready for the 2024 season. We got to start team previews. I'm very late at starting them this year. I went to spring training, got back, got really sick, still am sick, going into coughing spells. So that's why um, we're not going to do as many collaborations this year. I'm going to try to do a few, but I got to run through these quick. So these aren't going to be as extensive as usual, but we're going to jump into this team, talk about the Cardinals a little bit. But the big news is that they've just extended Oliver Marmol after last year's disastrous 71-91 and 91 season. I didn't see this coming. I figured, hey, this is last year of his contract. If anything, they'll fire him. But if they don't fire him, they'll let him at least manage this year, see how it goes. If things are going terribly, they might fire him late in the year. And if things go well... Cardinals make the playoffs, and then you can extend him after the year. But I think that the Cardinals front office did this partially just to say, hey, relax, don't worry about your job. Your job is secure. They don't completely blame last season on Marmol. Obviously, there was lots of injuries. The pitching staff wasn't deep enough, but the players seem to like Marmol. He seems to be a good player's manager, and I think that this move makes sense in a lot of ways. Just to say, go out there and don't worry about it. Let's let's. Let's do everything possible to make this season a success and nothing like last season. And we'll worry about 2026 when 2026 comes. Or excuse me, 25. 25 and 26. But let's focus on 2024 right now. And uh, that's what the Cardinals are doing. And they had a crazy offseason, signed tons of pitching. We're going to look at all of that. But right now, Cardinals fans are pissed off from what I can tell. Over on Twitter, we can see here, there it is. Oliver Marmol extended through 2026. There is my man Jim from Ball Cap Sports. Nope, don't like that. And lots of Cardinals fans not feeling this move at all. How do I schedule a meeting with the front office without proving anything? What could possibly go wrong? This organization is arrogant and dysfunctional. Is it April 1st already? Or is every day a good day for humor? A most unnecessary extension. So uh, obviously, why? Why would you do that? So obviously lots of Cardinals fans. It was the worst thing ever written. Not feeling it. Thumbs down. But why? So uh, clearly not a popular move. But honestly, if you weren't going to fire him, this will allow him to relax, not worry about his job, take some of that pressure off when it comes to that and let him focus on winning games. And like, if the players like him, obviously it wasn't a disastrous clubhouse. It was just a, a, a terrible season where things just fell apart with the pitching staff. And yeah, they lost 91 games. But the team looks a lot better coming into 2024. Obviously, we'll look at this team, but um, major signings during the offseason, picking up a ton of pitching help to fortify that staff. Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn, and of course, Sonny Gray, fortifying the rotation. And then you're going to have a lot of options in the minor leagues, young options who were not quite a season last year. This year, a lot of them will be ready to jump into that rotation if needed. So I think that the Depth looks a ton better, plus they signed a lot of uh, relief pitching help as well that we'll take a look at. But looking at the rotation, Miles Michaelis, uh, Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn. So Gibson, Lynn were signed. Also Sonny Gray, dealing with a little injury right now, but I don't think it's anything too serious, so he should be back soon. Steven Matz, Zach Thompson, first round pick back in 2019. He should be ready to go. And then you have Matthew Liberator in the minor leagues. S lots of really good options in the minor leagues. Um, good Strong starting pitching options who could come up like Drew Rom, um, but good solid lefty. So uh, I like their depth this year. It's miles better, no pun intended, than it was last year. So um, really like this team, this rotation right here. And uh, as far as the the bullpen, obviously Ryan Helsley's back, Gallegos is back, um, Jojo Romero, all these guys are back. But you add a ton of new options here. Andrew Kidred, Kenyon Middleton, Riley O'Brien, and Ryan Fernandez is a strikeout machine who's been with Boston for a while. Good, hard fastball, and uh, we'll see how he does as a Rule 5 guy. He's got to stay on the roster all year, but I like that they, they used every avenue they could. Trade, free agent, Rule 5, purchased a guy, did everything they could to fortify this pitching staff from the rotation to the bullpen, and, and it looks so much better. So uh, I do not think this team's going to lose anywhere close to 91 games this year. Jumping into the starting lineup right here is a great looking lineup. 
ton of power. The middle of this lineup here is just very, very, very intimidating. Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Gorman, Nolan Arenado, Wilson Contreras, Alec Burleson, and then Jordan Walker, and of course, Dylan Carlson as well. I, I mean, the entire lineup, and then Brendan Donovan leading off. Um, he's got some pop himself. Good on-base guy. Really solid guy to lead off. 365 on-base last year, 358 on-base. Of course, we know Paul Goldschmidt. Um, but everyone in this lineup has a on-base percentage north of 300. Mason Wynn is a uh, really solid young prospect. We'll see how he does at the shortstop position. But if and he added a little depth to him shortstop with a guy by the name of Brandon Crawford. So you add Crawford. Yes, he was terrible last year. Had like a negative 1.4 war to hit like 190 something. It was just a really poor year for Brandon Crawford. And at his age, turning 37 now. Makes sense the Giants wouldn't bring him back. I'm a Giants fan. of It's really sad to see him go. Really weird to see him not in the orange and black. Really sucks that he couldn't retire a Giant. Grew up a Giants fan, but it is what it is. He wants to continue his career, and he has a chance to do so. And Brandon Crawford's going to be a backup shortstop here for the Cardinals. They also bring back Matt Carpenter. I think this is nice, just to have a familiar name. Now you you got a lot of guys retiring. You know, no more Pujols, obviously. Um, no more... Uh, Wayne Wright. So uh, a lot of these legends, these Cardinals guys are gone. Matt Carpenter was there for years, over 10 years. Matt Carpenter was a St. Louis Cardinal going back to 2011. He made his debut in 2011. That's the last time the Cardinals won the World Series. I don't think he played in the World Series, but he made his debut that year. Uh, Yvonne Herrera, backup catcher here, will be backing up Contreras. They also have some you know, good solid depth in the minors as well offensively, but uh, if they don't have injury issues, they're not going to need that because this lineup is really strong as is. So I don't see how this team can lose 91 games again with the improvements in the rotation and the bullpen and coming back with that powerful lineup. A um, little bit worried about guys like Brandon Crawford and Matt Carp Carpenter also hit like one something with the Yankees last year. So I a little worried about this bench and their, their depth offensively. But like I said, they do have guys in the minor leagues right here. We can see some of that depth. Uh, Thomas Sejaci here, right? Good, solid infielder. Um, Cesar Prieto, Nick Dunn. We may see some of these guys make their uh, their big league debuts. I'm not. Sh I don't think. I don't think they've made their big league debut yet. But uh, yeah. So okay, the depth is not as strong offensively, but as long as they don't have major injuries, this lineup should be able to hold it down pretty easily. Um, but I, they really focused on pitching depth because that was the problem last year. So overall, the Cardinals have made massive improvements, and it makes sense to me. You make sure that the manager is secure, he feels good, he's safe in his job, he's not going to get fired, he signs an extension, and let's go focus on winning. That's the mindset of the Cardinals' front office. They've provided him now with a team more, with more than enough depth to be able to go out there and compete for a National League Central Championship or at least a playoff berth. Let me know what you guys think of the Cardinals in 2024. Those are my quick thoughts. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe. I'm going to be pumping out these previews here this year pretty quick um, because I'm behind, like I said. But you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you next time.